came in just like that. It's a video and we started with puppies because there will be some bash, there will be some code, there will be some terminal. As I said, I, I considered showing it with source tree mixed with bash, but I installed source tree, then I figured I need to make an account and I couldn't get ours, so sorry. Uh, this is where you download git bash, which also has GUI, which will be talked about. Uh, this is source tree, like there's a shit ton of tutorials on it, so that's also the reason why I chose not to talk about it. And this is GitHub Student Developer Pack, which like surprisingly not many people are familiar with. So if you sign up for it and you're a student, you get uh, two years of free, like basically like you were paying a fiver a month, you get like the same, the same, the same quality of of GitHub experience and unlimited private repositories with, yeah, you need to pay for private repositories if you're a student, you don't have to. So moving on, we go to github.com, we create a um, account, well, I just sign in because I already have one. Um, this is how it looks like when you sign, sign in. You have your own repositories here, private and public. We click new repository, and this is all after we installed Git Bash. I, I hope this is like uh, this is obvious. You name your repository. You name it something sensible usually. Make it private. Initialize with README. Because why not? Add the Git ignore you have. There's like plenty pre 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 created GitHub ignores. This is basically keeping your uh, repository clean and without any redundant files. So if you use Unity, there's one for Unity. If you use Unreal, there's one for Unreal. I decided I decided the MIT license because that's the one we usually go with with GS projects. Then you do what I just did. So you clone the you can clone it or you can uh, <coughs> type it in. Doesn't really matter. It's the same as in the and here. No, I know it's not. It's dot git. So you better not just like following it from the from the website. What I did just like uh, was this is this is bash. This is like those commands is like git it's bash language and git bash is just combining it both. So if you type in ls dash less you can you can basically scroll or your or your uh, folders in the repository I also wanted to do it the other way, which would be working with uni computers, but didn't work with mine. Uh, there's also like you can see the stuff like appearing. That's the that's the keyboards. That's the key keyboards I'm pressing. I I <coughs> turn it on because usually when I watch some web webinars and stuff, I'm annoyed that people are just like doing some quick shortcuts and I don't know what's happening. So you're welcome. So LS stands for list, you list all the folders in the repository, CD, current directory, and then you put the name of the directory you want to go to. And we move on to git bash now, git clone is how you, how you like initialize and set the URL of your repository with one command. And this is actually I done it on purpose. If you mistype, it will tell you like the, the command you are supposedly going for and we don't have to create any like uh, we don't have to do, go like new folder test gds and then clone it there if we clone it's already like the folder is being created and git is sitting in it and you go for move one like source control is version control so yeah it will become apparent hopefully uh, Oh no, I, I, I was talking shit. You still need to initialize the git. <laughs> oh no, no, I'm sorry, that was, yeah. I, I was trying to check the remote, but we are not in git repository right now. And so now we are in git repository, you can see here that it's saying master, so we are on master branch. We check the, we check the URL, git remote, verify. It's telling us, yes, you are hooked up, your origin is, has GDS. This is remote repository. What what we will be doing now is deal with your local repository. 
get status, it's showing us that there's nothing to commit, we've done no changes with our, with our repository. We go to documents, this is what we cloned, this is what is in the remote as well, there's nothing in it so far. And usually what you would use it for is just like your Visual Studio, Unity, Unreal projects. Just for just like for the test, I will show a simple text file. Because you can use it for anything, like Microsoft Word documents, it's all in it's all in the library, so you can do whatever you like with it. And this is me being silly and thinking if I tech, if I create a text document and name it CPP, it will create a CPP file, but it created a text file. So but I'll, I'll kept it because it's just showing you what problems you might have when you're being done. So I was trying to, and if you go notepad.exe, well, which is basically with terminal, the, the first, the first uh, name of the program, if we go git and then command, this is basically like clicking on Windows, clicking like, uh, like on Visual Studio, and then going, and then choosing command is like going to your, it's like, for example, clicking debug. So you could go Visual Studio space debug, and this is obviously will not work, but just to give you an idea how the terminal works. So notepad exe well, and then and then name of the file. Well, well, fire fire up this file with notepad. So here we are. You can see that this is like lol.cpp. I put something in test one. You can treat it like your CPP file because it has lines. So it could be code as well, it doesn't matter. This is me thinking what I should do next. Um, so, git space diff shows you the difference from your previous command to the current one. So you can see here that what I added was test one, new commit, lab all means. So this is, this is the stack, now I need to add it to my stack, it's now it's being staged for commit, git add dot or git add to dash all, stages it for commit. We commit now and git commit dash m, m stands for message. I call it something, something done, or cpp text update. There's like many schools, how you should name your commits, usually it's just dog shit, but <laughs> You go git push, and because I have everything set up on my computer, it's working. And I have a quick free, I have one minute, quick one minute video I can show you later how to set up username and all other stuff. And this is the command you should be running like first. You set your, set the upstream for origin master, so what you have to do later is only git push, but because I have it all set up before I didn't have to do it, but that's what you should be doing with your new repositories. Uh, what I ran there was, uh, no, it's, good work. it's git k. What I did run was Well, git k ampersand is basically a GUI for bash. So here you can see all your previous commits. The yellow dot is your the commit that you're sitting currently on. This here says initial commit, low cpp txt change, and this is the update. And what I will be showing now is to how to go to the previous update. Wait, wait, wait. There's something wrong. All right. Yeah, so. Sorry, I'm probably making it really confusing. <coughs> right, so we grab the ID of the, of the first update, uh, of the first commit, by running git k ampersand ampersand, is basically running it in a thread, so we can keep using bash and git k. I grab the ID of the commit, of my initial commit, and here is just to show you, that's the, that's the latest commit, that's the file, like, looking right now. 
If I want to go back to the previous commit because for some reason I've been coding for hours, my code is not working anymore, I don't know why, I don't know what happened, I just go back to the last working version. And this is how we do it with bash, with source suite, it's a bit easier, you just double click on your last commit. You need to add soft. There's a, there's a commit you could add which would fuck up your uh, repository and I will not tell you what. Just use soft and it will be fine. You need to stash because of the way soft is working for the to go back to the commit <coughs> that uh, that you that the ID put in here. I get I run get status like from time to time just to see what's happening and you could you could have seen that there's like a we are sitting on the on the initial commit. We we went back to the, to the initial commit. There's no file. There's no log.exit. There's no log.cpp because we went back to the, to the stage we had at the beginning. And that's what you want. You want to keep track of your stages. You want to keep track of your code development, of your program development. Because there will be time when it will be not working and you will not know why. So all you can do is just to go back. Here I was just playing silly and trying out new stuff which I shouldn't have, which I apologize for. But if you go get stash apply, basically what happened here, uh, I, we went back to the previous previous commit, which is very confusing, I understand. The ID I grab now is from the, from the, from the most recent commit. Go good, get reset soft, ID, stash, and you can see that the file is back the way it was. Magic. And yeah. And that's something that can be done with source tree, but there's plenty of tutorials on how to do source tree. So I guess that that is just um, I hope hopefully it will what's happening now is understandable, but I reckon it's not, but it's okay. So this is how it looks on the website, and now I will show you the, the error you will get when starting with, with, uh, with, Git, uh, with, with GitHub. Especially when working with a team, there will be people who will be pushing to the remote before you. You will not give a toss about it, you will, you will start working on your own. You will make changes, you will make changes in Unity, Visual Studio, your SFML, whatever. And you will try to push, and in a second we will see what will happen. I was a bit confused here because that was the first time I was trying to fuck up GitHub. But I've managed to do it. So now we go back here, and this is sitting on the remote. I make my changes. I'm really happy, I'm working. Someone just like someone somewhere else was working on the same project, pushed it to, to the remote. I'm working on my stuff. I added something to all the CPP. I'm committing my changes, hoping it will be all working. And this is, by the way, how you do comments. You just like uh, start your, start your, start your uh, commit message, press enter. And you can press it, enter as many times as you want in it will. I will show you how it looks like later. And it's rejected. Of course it's rejected because someone else pushed and you cannot push with your stage. You must be all at the same stage. So before, when you get stuff like this and you get, oh my god, so much text, like kill me. Don't get upset. Just pull with, like, when you work remotely with someone, you're probably best just going to pull without rebase. I, that I was, um, yeah, I was just like being used to rebasing, and you can tell that we have the bad commit from from the remote here. I oh, know, uh, yeah, we do. And now we can push. Now it got it got merged. It got merged with the commit from the remote. <coughs> so the yeah, I should have told you. But and now we can push. We pushed. We pulled. We pushed, and we have. We have the foo bar, which was someone pushing before us, and now we have the most recent one. We got so we updated our local Git repository, and then by pulling, and then we pushed, and now everyone have the same, the same, the same version. And this is the comments I told, I uh, showed you how to do. I have no idea how to do that with source. 
Okay, and that's pretty much it. But it's like a quick rundown of how to set it up on uni computers. What's oh no, that's that's the same video, sorry. Is that the same video? Yeah. yeah, so when you when you set it up on uni computers and um, it will basically tell you what to do, but it's just to give you an idea. You go get config dash dash global username user dot name and you put your name and this is this was just showing you what you uh, the command without the, the double quotes where will just show you the current the current uh, username. I changed it to Matthew it was Matthew Lewis and now I'm setting the new email. Which is not my email. And I'm just checking what's the current email. And because it's the newer version of Bash, it will work. What was trying to do? Yeah, I was so that's basically it. Like later I was just like trying to show you what happens when you when you push with a wrong username. So this is like this is like my normal normal profile. It's still pushed because with the newest bash, it can recognize your it can recognize if it's you or not. This is I'm not getting into technical details, but you can tell that it's a different user than the, than the previous one because we changed the name. So later I go back to my normal user user email username, and I push again and I'm back to back to my normal normal Git repository. Yeah, it was really confusing, I know, but hopefully it, will, it gave you a rough idea of what GitHub can be used, how it works. <laughs> Maybe you're less intimidated to use Git Bash. If you are, just go on and do some, you know, watch some tutorials on Source Tree. If you Google Source Tree Unity, there's a really good tutorial on how to use Source Tree. That's the one I used when I started with, with GitHub, and that's pretty much it. Uh,